Okay, so it would be helpful to know um, just who you guys are. So how many of you are uh, maybe developers? Okay, most. And uh, people trying to become developers? A few. Um, designers? Most of the rest. Power users? People just interested in WordPress? Okay. All right, so mostly developers and aspiring developers. Um, and so the, this is largely targeted at, at folks who meet that description. But I'm hoping that anybody else will, uh, will understand a little bit about how, how developers think and can actually help developers be better communicators. So, um, quickly, my name's Fred. I, um, with a business partner, my business partner David, I run WP Shout, which does WordPress tutorials, weekly WordPress tutorials, they're free. Um, we also run an agency called Pressa, and uh, the bottom there is um, the link to follow along with this presentation. Uh, it's just wbshop.com slash wcboss. Okay, what is technical communication? Um, it really is explaining hard things to humans. Hard things, what are they? They are things that take a lot of specific technical knowledge. Technical knowledge is knowledge that is unrelated to human intuition. So, you know, we might think, um, like, oh, he doesn't love me, so he doesn't want to talk to me. Like, that's a, that's a very human, intuitive kind of thing. But the inner workings of WordPress or, you know, how you uh, use SAS or how you use jQuery or something has basically no relationship to human intuition. So you have to know a bunch of very, very specific details. And if you get the details wrong, you're, there's nothing but details on it. So those are hard things to explain because somebody's got to know so many details before stuff works right. You can't fudge it. What does explaining mean? It means conveying this knowledge, this technical knowledge you have, effectively enough that it reaches a specific goal. If, if you're trying to train somebody to do your job, the goal might be perfect understanding. They understand everything you understand about a specific technology. Um, if it's a client or a potential client, the goal might just be that you give them the right general intuition to be able to make a decision. You know, this looks like an informational site, and I think WordPress is the right solution for you for a bunch of reasons. And you, they don't really need to know the details about, oh, well, it doesn't have breaking changes because of backwards compatibility, unless they ask, right? Humans, imperfectly rational, have limited processing power, um, are very different. Some people love technology, they just eat it up. Some people are kind of afraid of it. A lot of people, probably most people. Um, humans don't like um, to be stupid. They don't want to be the one to ask the question when everybody else seems to be nodding in agreement, even if, uh, as is often the case, everybody else is kind of feeling the same way. It's sort of like they're the one person in the room who doesn't know what's going on. Nobody wants to break that silence, so the emperor has no clothes kind of problem, right? Um, humans have emotions. They don't like to be talked down to. They don't like um, constantly feeling that, like the person who's playing catch up. Uh, and you, as a technical person, are a human too, uh, which makes the pro process um, uh, even more, <laughs> even more difficult, maybe. And why does technical communication matter? Well, it's the goals we mentioned before. My cousin says he can build this site with GoDaddy's page builder. Why would that be a bad thing? Uh, it sounds free, and GoDaddy says it's great. Explain to me in language I can understand why I should pay you to use WordPress for my project. Or, you know, WordPress sounds good, but my boss is worried. He read a thing that WordPress is really easy to hack. Is that true? Will, will I be hacked if I use WordPress? You know? I mean, these are, this could be thousands of dollars. The way you answer this question could make a thousand, multi-thousand dollar difference. Or maybe you write technology for other technical people. I bought your plugin, but I don't understand the documentation, so I'm starting a support thread. And uh, now a little piece of your Saturday um, is helping me understand what I should have already understood if you wrote better documentation. So this stuff matters. So we're going to um, get into the nature of technical knowledge and proclaim to use an analogy that I hope you guys will like. As somebody who is technically, technically, technically knowledgeable, you are on a hill. You're on a hill, and um, people who don't have the technical knowledge you have are in the valley below the hill. So, let's diagram this out. Okay. You are at the top of the hill. You have technical knowledge. 
Being at the top of the hill, there's an amazing view. You can see and do all kinds of incredible things. You can see cloud patterns forming on the horizon. So you can predict the weather two days from now. Or you can say, you know, uh, we're in Kansas. I don't know if there's actually any large hills in Kansas. Um, let's see, here in Colorado. And you know that in New Mexico, it's snowing, right? Pretty amazing stuff, stuff that you can't do in the valley. And then there's the hill itself, of course, and the people who have not gone up that hill are in the valley. They are valley people. The hill and you, it took a lot of effort to get up the hill. But, like we said, being at the top of the hill has a really cool view. So, why did you climb the hill? It's because you're passionate about the stuff you can do at the top of the hill. That's why you climbed it in the first place. The view really, really matters to you. What's going on with the valley people? Well, that's the default. We all start out in the valley. The valley is a wonderful place to be. There's nothing wrong with it. The only thing is that people in the valley sometimes need information you can only get from the top of the hill. They need hilltop information. That means you, at the top of the hill, may need to provide one of two kinds of things. You might need to provide instructions for climbing the hill, or more commonly, people don't need to go up the hill themselves. They just need to know the little bit, a little bit of what you know, um, communicated in a way that they can understand it without all your specialized hilltop information. They just need to know it's raining in New Mexico. They don't need to know that about 80 miles away is what appears to be a cumulus pattern that's darkening or something like that. They just want to know, is it raining in New Mexico? I'm thinking about, you know, weekending there. And you say, yes, it is raining in New Mexico. That's all they need from you. Okay, let's talk about how communication between the hill and the valley sometimes breaks down. And I'm calling these just sort of attitude or approach problems. And there's two main ones I want to talk about. First one is arrogance. I am only actually interested in speaking to other people who are chilling with me at the top of this hill. That's arrogance. What it looks like. People who are curt, standoffish, you need information and it's like you ruined their day. All I need is to know if it's raining in New Mexico or all I need to know is, all I need to know is, you know, why is my website down and when is it coming back up? But it's like I'm scared to ask you because every time I ask you, you treat it like a big imposition, right? Refusal to simplify into terms other people understand. They give you the full technical truth, which you don't understand, and then you ask for clarification and they do it again, right? Um, testing other people. Oh, I mean, are you, are you even using, whatever, WPCLI? And maybe it has a bit of an accusation quality to it. It's sort of distinguishing between people who it is and isn't worth talking to. Um, this is sort of a cause of imposter syndrome, the feeling that um, you're always uh, coming up short despite your best efforts, which is a really common problem in technology. And then, this is actually a quote at the bottom here, basically not really caring whether other people understand you or not. Um, this is a quote from a really, really good uh, um, WordPress developer who I talked to at another WordCamp. He says, one thing I recently learned is that I had this problem where it didn't matter how the conversation went and whether I was getting through to the person, whether I was actually answering their problem, because I could always fall back on being right. I could always fall back on the knowledge that I was right. So that that's not good. Um, this is a slide that I loved so much. I, I didn't go to LoopConf, but I like streamed some of the videos on YouTube. And this slide I love so much that I actually screenshotted it and put it on my desktop. Um, it's, it's the Rockstar persona, right? That's, I hope you guys can see this. It's not too dark, is it? Can't see it. Okay, I'll read it to you. The Rockstar persona idolizes technical prowess, doesn't document code well since no one else will understand it anyway, unquestioned authority, works in silos, causes others to feel like imposters, and then the bottom says this behavior is taught, think group projects in high schools. Um, and then it's got, of course, a clip art of a guy ripping a wild guitar solo, which is what we all look like when we code. Um, so, where does arrogance come from? Well, sometimes it really is things like insecurity or bad manners or, you know, bad people skills or whatever. But I think more often it's a love of clarity. It's a love of the view, right? People who are confused and they're coming to you with questions that don't even make sense, they're sort of muddying up your clarity, which is the thing that you're really into, right? And so they sort of feel like an obstacle. Why would you try to explain all your knowledge to somebody who is just going to kind of muddy it up anyway? 
So I think that's where this sort of standoffish attitude comes from. And then the second problem is breeziness. Um, this was the best word I could find for it, but it's basically sort of um, uh, hoping that people understand you when there's no evidence that that's the case. So, so this is our hilltop guy. It's so easy to get up here. Actually, I'm assuming you're up here already. Now let's discuss the view from up here in extreme detail, right? What does this look like? Overload. You're exceeding other people's ability to learn. You're like, just watch this, you know, okay, just read this really quick and then we can talk about everything you learn. Explanations with too much tacit knowledge. What that means is knowledge that you assume other people have that they don't have. Oh yeah, just SSH in and blank, right? Oh yeah, just get into terminal and, you know, run NPM install, blah, 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 right? And it's like, for the people who don't, who don't have that knowledge, you've, everything that comes after that, you've completely lost them. Sailing over, over other people's heads, that's sort of similar. You're skipping the basics and you're diving into what you're interested in, right? Um, and then there's this kind of constant insistence, which shows up in writing a lot of the time, that what you're teaching people is really easy and simple and logical. And of course it is to you because you already know it. So in general, this breeziness is kind of enthusiasm, love of a subject as an impediment to communication. Again, where does this come from? It's love of the hilltop. The view is so cool. It's sitting right there. You can see all of it. It's, there it is. There's the clouds. There's the airplane, you know? But only you can see it. You took the effort to climb the hilltop, right? Yeah, so the problem with both arrogance and um, breeziness is that you're blinded by the view. Um, the knowledge that you've acquired is so important that you can't actually communicate it effectively. It gets in your way. It is the most important thing, and people kind of become, you know, maybe somebody that you can bring along, um, or they become an obstacle if you if you conclude that you can. All right. So th that's that's the um, bummer side of this. Now, what can we do right? I think that the right way to communicate technical information um, has two components. It's audience aware and it's strategic. So we'll look at these um, one by one. Audience aware means starting exactly where your audience is. It could be in the bottom of the valley if need be. You need to reason carefully and without bias about the extent of other people's knowledge. Really ask yourself, what do people actually know? That's a question you should be formally asking pretty often. Um, and then the way you communicate needs to reflect that knowledge. Even if, you know, what you wish you could be talking about is, is much more advanced, um, you, you can't wish away the fact that this stuff is hard to learn. So, analogies are really wonderful for this. You know, analogies phrase your own understanding in terms of understanding that the audience already has. They're really valuable. So let's take an example. How does WordPress work? And let's pretend that somebody, the, the person who asks us this is somebody who maybe understands a bit about web pages, but they're just learning about the idea of a CMS, right? So the first one is kind of a literal answer that I try to come up with. Well, you know, it's got a MySQL database, and uh, it stores post data in that database, and then there's a bunch of PHP processing that happens through WordPress core, also through um, themes that were custom that, that you know either we or a commercial vendor have put together and then there's optionally a number of third-party plugins that also that hook in and alter that that processing and the end result is an HTML file that is then pushed up on the browser. Well the analogy that will actually give people like 90% of the intuition they need right away to actually un go on and understand WordPress is that it's a factory that builds web pages. The database is the factory warehouse where all the raw materials go. The raw materials are the post content, right? And then the factory itself is, is all the PHP processing. And the factory's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, one thing it's got is uh, many assembly lines, which are the different PHP files that are in the template hierarchy. So that, you know, page.php is one assembly line, and index.php is another assembly line. And the final product is a web page that you can look at. And sometimes, you know, there's stuff that the factory doesn't do by default. So we have plugins. They're outside contractors. They don't live in the factory. They live somewhere else, but we call on them when we need them. You know? And you can actually build this, this analogy out pretty extensively. And people, um, they, they get the intuition. They get the, 
generalities of how WordPress works, even if they don't understand a lot about PHP or MySQL or the difference between a front end and a back end, you know, the difference between a server and a client, you know, you can give them the intuition that there's a bunch of stuff that's stored and then it's processed and then it's given to you, just like just like a factory does. Another um, uh, strategy that that is kind of audience aware that takes that that includes the audience what you're doing is listing knowledge dependencies. So tacit knowledge, knowledge that I'm just going to assume you have in writing this documentation or in giving this explanation or answering a question, right? Tacit knowledge is the air that makes breeziness breezy, right? It's the it's the sort of quantity of me explaining stuff in a way that you have no hope of understanding, right? So you need to make it clear where on the hill are we starting? What do you already need to know? Like, let's say we're writing a, a tutorial, right? What do you already need to know by the time of the beginning of this tutorial? You know, and that, that's going to be, I mean, you don't have to go crazy with it. Like, everybody knows how to turn a computer on. You can just leave that as tacit knowledge. But, you know, people may not know how to install a plugin, for example, right? So how far up are we starting? The second question is, in the, the, the actual, you know, learning process we're about to do, are we going to skip any steps? Are there going to be steps that we skip? Like, I just assume you know how to use like a command line tool. If we say that, then at least somebody knows what they need to be Googling if the tutorial completely loses them. It switches to a command line interface thing that just looks like, you know, Greek to them. Um, if, you manu if you actually say, you know, I'm not going to show you how to use a command line tool, but here's, here's a tutorial that I like. On, on that, whether you're on Windows or Mac or something like that, then you don't just lose people completely. So that's that's two and three combined. Are we skipping any steps in our tutorial? And if yes, where can I go to learn those steps? So I, I picked a, a um, uh, an example from the Grunt documentation. So this is the beginning of the documentation for Grunt, getting started. Grunt and Grunt plugins are installed and managed by npm, the Node.js package manager. Gr Grunt requires stable Node.js versions with greater or equal to odd version numbers. Before setting up run, ensure that your NPM is up to date by running a bunch of like command line code. This might require sudo on certain systems. Like, I guess everybody knows that Grunt is a command line tool, but it would be really nice to just hold people's hands who are still a little bit scared of the command line. You know, hey, like a lot of people use terminal. Those people are Mac people, and if you're a Windows person, like. You know, like I'm a Windows person and it sucks, but at least say that, you know, just say that. So, so you know, list your dependencies, right? Just like you would in an actual, like actual code you're writing, list the knowledge dependencies that go into the, the, the knowledge you're trying to communicate. And then the second um, uh, main approach that we, that, that's, that I think is really important is, is to communicate strategically. And what that means is, you want to reason very, very carefully about the goal of the communication you're doing. You know, tailor your communication. Well, why is somebody asking you this question? And your answer should reflect the reasons that they had in asking it, right? You should know exactly what it is that the person who's trying to get knowledge from you is trying to achieve. And your um, interaction with them should move in that direction. Tailor your communication to the goals of the interaction. So let's pretend a client is asking us, what is WordPress? Well, here's the Wikipedia, a couple of first sentences of the Wikipedia. WordPress is a free and open source content management system based on PHP and MySQL. Features include a plugin architecture and a template system. To 90, I'll say 7% of the world, that means nothing, right? But if this person is a potential client, right, WordPress makes it easy for you to use your website. It also makes it quicker and easier for us to build your site. We'd be happy to explain more about how. That might be what somebody needs, you know. You don't need to get into it unless they want the details and then, you know, there's a whole world of knowledge awaiting them that they've actually asked for, right? And then there's a lot of um, uh, um, examples that, that sort of come up in writing. And you'll find that thinking strategically about why you're saying something really improves your writing. So these, most of these examples I've pulled from the tutorials of we've written on WP Shout. Um, so here's one. Basically, a conditional tag is just a function that. A conditional tag is a function that. The difference is breeziness. The first one's breezy, the second one's not, right? 
what does breeziness do to the reader? It, first of all, it wastes words. They're, they're reading a bunch of words about how easy you think this thing you already know is, that they don't understand. And it discourages them. If, if they get it, the best you've done is waste words. If they don't get it, they don't get it and they're discouraged because it appears to be so easy to the alien who wrote this tutorial, right? So, um, if you think strategically, there's no good reason to write breezily like this. You were, when you wrote this sentence, you were writing for yourself, not your reader. So thinking strategically about what you're trying to get across will sort of screen out these kinds of problems. They'll actually improve your writing. This is another example. Uh, <laughs> Nothing too out of the ordinary here. Basically, we just do the style sheet and queuing as normal, but we've wrapped it in a simple if statement. Here we queue our style sheets as we described previously. So what does normal mean, right? No, normal, who knows what that means, but as we described previously, it means look further up in this tutorial and you'll see what I'm talking about. And then, you know, maybe an if statement isn't so simple for some people, right? And then this, uh, this is like, there's some breezy writing in WordPress core itself, right? Success, WordPress has been installed. Were you expecting more steps? Sorry to disappoint, right? Success, WordPress has been installed. Thank you and enjoy. Or just success, WordPress has been installed. Like, what if installing WordPress was not the easiest thing in the entire world for me? You know, what if that's true? That might very well be true. So, uh, you know, considering the range of experiences that your readers might be having when they manage to finally successfully install WordPress, I think, you know, argues against this kind of casual, sort of self-indulgent, flippant, right? So, um, just a, a quick summary. When we communicate technical knowledge, we don't want to be arrogant, and we don't want to be breezy. Arrogant means that you view people as an impediment because they can't understand what it is that you would want to communicate with them. Breezy means that you are unreasonably optimistic about people's um, ability to comprehend what it is you wish to communicate. And because of that, you lose them along the way. Both of those are, are real problems of technical communication. They, come, they both come from a good place, which is love of technical knowledge, love of knowledge, you know. There's something so cool up here that one, one thing is, I just don't want to waste my time with people who have no idea what the cool stuff is and they're still asking me about it, that's arrogant. And then the other attitude is, I just know I can race you guys up this hill. After all, I'm already up here. That's breezy. Those are both a problem. Yes, we do want to be audience aware and we want to be strategic. Audience aware means we have constantly in mind, with, with all the communication we do, the existing knowledge level that the people who are going to be receiving our communication are likely to have. And, you know, it's, it's very appropriate if in situations when you can, like if you're talking face to face, it's, it's wonderful to ask people what they know in a way that doesn't accuse them of, 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 of deficiencies in knowledge. So know who you're talking to and know what they already know and fill in the gaps for them. You know, if you need to take them up the hill a certain distance, don't skip steps. Or if you're going to skip steps, say which steps you skipped and where they can go to, to fill that in. And tell them where on the hill you're starting. And then strategic technical communication means that everything you say should be with reference to the goal of the interaction. You know, if it's to learn how to install a plugin, if it's a tutorial you're writing out about how to install a plugin, all communication should, should be in that vein. It should be with reference to that goal. If it's to try to get a client on board with using WordPress, everything you say should be with that goal. And that might mean that you phrase things in extremely simple language and um, don't really get into the, the technical nuances at all unless they ask you to. So if, if we can kind of keep these four, these sort of two don't do's and the two do do's uh, <laughs> in mind, I think we can make a pretty nice landscape for ourselves. Um, thank you. So uh, I'd love to take questions. I just wanted to say a little bit about First, our sponsors at WP Shout, um, SiteGround, InMotion Hosting, and ServeMats. Um, they are really, really wonderful people. ServeMats uh, wrote all-in-one WP Migration, the plugin, which is a very, very good migration plugin that kind of migrates both your file system and your database all at once. So, um, very wonderful. And SiteGround is, uh, and InMotion are both outstanding hosts. 
And then um, we wrote a book, Up and Running, uh, a practical guide to WordPress development that we try very hard to ensure sort of incorporates the um, the principles I just described, and it and it um, its goal is to basically teach people WordPress development, the the core principles of WordPress development. Um, and you can find us at wpshop.com and at wpshop. Okay, guys. Um, any thoughts or questions? How do I see technical writing evolving? Um, can you ask a little bit more about that? So the question was, do I see technical writing moving towards more middle ground as opposed to like very, very rarefied technical stuff? Um, do I see the language changing? I think what I can say is that in our writing, which is on WordPress topics, um, we try to extend as far down the hill as we can while staying true to the actual technical truth. And I think as technologies get better and more user friendly, um, technical writing will find that it's able to do that better and better. You know, I mean, I think 40 years ago, this talk might not even make sense because if you were interested in computers, you were by definition somebody who, you know, maybe whose who's life passion was computers. I don't know if that's true, but you know, the number of people who know how to use WordPress at a pretty high level now, and who still have other interests, is high, you know? And I think that will continue. And, and so I do think that there will be a place for technical writing that stays, that covers a wider spectrum of knowledge, because I think that technology is becoming um, more and more sort of democratic in terms of the number of people who can engage with it at a high level, as a general trend. I don't know, that's a really interesting question. situations like Cron. Offhand, I don't. Um, and one frustration I'll mention, again, is working on Windows and just feeling like a total peasant, you know, in Stack Overflow posts and everything else. So, um, does anybody in the audience just, like, how did you guys learn the command line, those of you who know it? What? DOS. DOS. Yeah, me too, actually. Yeah, I, thanks, Adam. I don't know. I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll tweet you. Um, any tips for working with people who absolutely insist on staying in the valley and they don't want to learn, they want you to be, you know, they want you to do it for them? Tips on working with people who don't want to learn, they just want you to do it for them. Um, I kind of think that that's a valid place to be, unless it's getting in the way of whatever project it is that that needs to happen, you know? Um, so I think there's a balance there. Are these clients? Colleagues. Colleagues, clients. Okay. Um, I think it's a balance. Like, for example, if you built a client site, but the client refuses to learn how to use WordPress at a basic level, it's like, what do you do with that? I don't know. I mean, you know, you, hey, if you want to, if you want your website to do things, you know, you're going to need to learn how to write posts and things like that, right? Um, but I think that there's a lot of opportunities for technical people to just give uh, the core intuitions that are needed for decision making, you know? And um, I love, like, one of my sort of, the games I play with myself in client interactions is like, how um, simply and analogically can I describe this? and still get to a decision, you know? Like, uh, how little technical detail do I have to impose on somebody 
and still have them feel empowered to make a decision based on what I told them. You know, and, and there's a lot of and trust plays very closely into that as well. Obviously, right? I mean, if you've got trust built with somebody, um, you might be able to say you might be able to go into a lot less detail and still convince them that you actually understand the whole shape of the, you know, of, of, of things. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. Sure. <laughs> So the question was thoughts on teaching to a group that have different varying knowledge levels and um, that are maybe getting things at different speeds. Um, that sounds like a sort of a classic just education question in general. Um, I suppose if I was teaching a group of five people how to do HTML and two of them were super good on it, two of them were struggling and one of them was completely lost. Um, I would, um, I would probably try to to do supplementary time with the person who was lost at the very least. Like try to meet with them one on one. Is that a possibility in your situations? Yes. Yeah, it is sometimes during breaks and things like yeah. that. Yeah. It's tricky and it's not ideal. I know it's not ideal. Yeah. But so you're so just to make sure you're learning HTML in a group with like about four other people. Yeah, in the in that class. Gotcha. Yeah, and. Um, would it, like, are you the person who wishes there was more so, sort of supplementary information? Oh, no, so I'm, I'm the instructor. Oh, you're the instructor. All right. <laughs> well, um, yeah, if there's people who are just not getting it, I don't know how your financial model works out or whatever, but um, I personally love to do one-on-one -on -one instruction with people. And again, like, maybe people just need a, sort of a, an analogy that, you know, well, a tag is like a... What is a tag like? I don't know. A tag is like um, an order to paint something a certain color, I guess. Or that's really stupid. I don't know. But yeah, just I would just keep at it with the people who are struggling. If you think you can pull them out and talk to them separately, that's my very naive advice. I don't know that much about teaching and more than one on one. If anybody here does, it would be really nice to talk to her. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 
so there's a question, if you're writing documentation that has code in it, do you recommend actually doing an example or, uh, or not? And if you can do it, I, like a front-to-back example that actually works, like you can just paste it in and it actually runs, to me is like the gold standard. Because um, like in, in the book, we, we, we did that. Like in, in almost any example we ran would run on its own if you paste it into a plugin. And to me, that's so important. And the reason is because you might be doing a tutorial about something very specific, but again, people don't understand maybe the context, or they don't like, in the book, we wrote like environment. You are in functions.php in your file in a comment at the top of the thing, you know, because I've literally had the problem where there's a PHP code snippet and I don't know what file to paste it into. So, um, yeah, I would, if you can do it, I would write out full examples that work, for sure. And, um, because then you not only solve the person's, the immediate piece that you think you're teaching about, but you're actually teaching about like the entire system and how it works, and people can do a lot more sort of deep learning um, based on looking at something that actually runs and works, rather than just like a little snippet of something broader that they can't understand. So, that very much so, yeah, personally. And I also find like Foo, Bar, and Baz really confusing, personally. Like, I think a lot of programmers find that easy because they just go, this is meant to be arbitrary, like it's, you know, but somehow those letters, I don't know why, they confuse me. I don't know why. But I find code that's, that has that in it. Personally, I find that confusing. Um, anything else? Okay. How are we on time? I think we're about time. Guys, thank you so much. It was really...